Hi, everyone. Hello. It's nice to see everyone today. I hope you've been having a good day since I last saw you. Um, I know that you've been getting a lot of information from my colleagues on campus uh, who work in the offices that support all of our students and are certainly um, really looking forward to supporting your students um, in the coming days and weeks, um, in the coming four years. Um, but we thought that you would really like to hear from students, um, hear about their daily lives, their experiences, um, what life at Williams is like, so you can get a little insight into the things that your students are going to be experiencing and all the exciting things that are to come. So I thought maybe we can just do a round of introductions first before we get into a couple of questions. So maybe um, name, pronoun, hometown, major, class year, those basics. Um, so my name is Michelle Lopez. Um, I am a rising junior, or I am a junior at this point. I am a junior. Um, I use she, her, hers, and I'm from the Bronx, um, and I am majoring in American Studies, concentrating in Latino Studies, and I'll be studying away for this entire year. Hi, I'm Abe Ifa. I'm a junior from Clifton, New Jersey. Um, I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, I'm a chem major, and I'm also pre-med. My name is Alejandro. I also use he, him, his pronouns. I'll be a junior advisor this year in MD1 admission. Uh, I major in art history. I have a concentration in Latino Latina studies. And I grew up in Colorado and Mexico both. Hi, I'm Mazzy. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm a biology and women's and sexuality studies double major. And I'm also pre-med. Let's thank our panelists for being here. So I thought perhaps we would start off with a couple of questions um, that I'll pose that all of you can answer just to get us warmed up. And then we'll make sure we just leave a lot of question, uh, time for you all to ask questions that you've been wondering about the student experience. So maybe we can start off with, could you describe a typical day in the life um, of you as a Williams student? And we can go in whatever order you like. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm also on the track team, so I didn't mention that. So I wake up pretty early. I'm a morning person. I usually take morning classes. However, this semester all my classes start at 11, so I'm kind of happy about that. Um, so usually wake up, I wake up usually two hours before class, so I can kind of like do some work, maybe like get some breakfast. Um, I usually eat at an eco cafe, which you guys probably already saw, because a lot of the, this is science squad, which you probably already know, and a lot of science classes are here. Um, I might have lab in the middle of the day, go to lab, go to class, finish that. From four to six, I'm usually booked with practice. Um, usually after that, I might have a meeting of some sort because I'm also on two boards, um, Sisterhood and SOCA, which are like student um, groups on campus, which you guys will find out about, your students will find out about um, at the Provo Key Fair, so like that'll be fun. Um, and then get some dinner with some friends maybe, you might eat alone, might get snar. Um, and might go to the library after that, like work in a problem set with some friends or do a reading or some sort of work. And then I close out my day by laptop, playing a game, YouTube or something like that and go to sleep and repeat. Yes. <laughs> um, so my schedule is really, really dependent on the day. Um, each sort of weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday has different things that bring with it, uh, all pretty packed. Um, so I usually wake up also pretty early. I usually start the day with the gym and then I'll head to breakfast. Um, most of my classes are later in the day also, so the morning time is my big homework time um, because after classes and I'm usually running rehearsals. Uh, this year I'm the artistic director for Ritmo Latino, a Latino dance group on campus. Um, so I'll be in board meetings and rehearsals, um, choreographic sessions that keep me pretty busy. I sit on a couple committees for the 62 Center for Theater and Dance as well. Um, so those kinds of meetings also take up a lot of my time. Um, and then the evenings are usually kind of finishing up the last bits of homework that I couldn't do in the morning uh, before I headed to bed and repeating. <laughs> um, so I'm very much a night person. So um, in the morning I wake up with just the right amount of time to get ready and go to class. Um, I'll have class from like around nine or 10 to about lunch, um, eat lunch and then either go to lab or I'll even be done for the day if it's a shorter uh, class day. Um, in the fall, I play JV soccer, so I'll have practice in the afternoon. 
um, get dinner with the team, and then shower, get ready to pretty much do work for the rest of the night. Um, it, usually, it varies on how long that is. Um, and then I'll probably get a late night snack at snack bar um, before heading off to bed and sort of repeating that process. And throughout the year, um, it varies. Um, so there might be like a club meeting in there. Um, so like last year, I was also on the first gen board. Um, so that was um, a weekly time commitment. Um, I'm also a TA and a tutor for chem. So I'll tutor a couple nights a week and TA an extra lab section. Um, so it really varies a lot. And there are a lot of different options. Um, so I'm also a sort of early bird morning person. I wake up at 6 a.m. every single day. Um, my body is, I cannot sleep in. I tried sleeping in today, couldn't happen. Um, so I love 8.30 classes. I love having enough time to like sort of, that's usually when I'll text my mom and things like that. Um, it's when I catch up on stuff. So really that little time between six and eight is my time to like go through everything. Um, so I love 8.30 classes. So I'm usually in class um, from about eight to 11. And then after that, I might grab a quick lunch to go. And I'm um, pretty well known around campus for being someone who's always at the elementary school. Um, so I've held quite a few positions over there, ranging from the preschool classroom helper um, to the direct assistant to the special education teacher, um, to an after school tutor, to a math tutor. Um, and I basically worked with all grades, really love working with elementary school, um, which means that my phone is completely off. I am not allowed to show my kids my phone. It, it causes all kinds of questions that I don't really want to answer. So my phone stays in my book bag. My mom knows she can blow up my phone. It is not coming out the bag. Um, so that's one thing. And then that usually ends anywhere, depending on the day, from about 3 to 5. Um, after that, if it's three o'clock, I usually am pretty tired and I'll take a quick nap. I am a nap person. Um, if it's five, then I'll go directly to dinner with friends, things like that. And again, Abe and I were also on the board for First Gen together. So um, things like that would take up time. I'm also the co-director. So that meant like, um, you know, sort of getting our orientation leaders who are with your beautiful children right now, making sure those people are the perfect people we could have, um, you know, little logistics, things like that. So really like, dealing with clubs, et cetera, different things. And that usually happens until about, I would say nine, maybe 10. And then I would say I'm 10 to 12. I probably work with friends. Like I'm an American studies major, which means the majority of my time is reading and or writing. Um, and for me, that has to happen when I feel like it. So I don't have a strict homework schedule. I have a, a feeling that tells me to do homework and I do homework at that moment. Um, so yeah, definitely. Thanks. Um, so one of the things that I, I hope you're taking away from that is that this, the schedule at college is just really different than high school, right? In high school, they get up, they go to school, they're at school, and then there's after school time. And at college, it's just because you're living here, it's so different. There's a class here on this day, and then maybe a lot of space, and then another class with a completely different schedule the next day. And I think sometimes it will look like there's a lot of free time because you're not always in class, but hopefully what you just took away from this is that there are lots of ways that our students are filling that time. They're doing a lot of independent academic work. They're doing a lot of reading, a lot of writing, um, a lot of quantitative work, so problem sets for homework, for science and math. They're on a lot of um, student organizations and other sorts of activities that require them to be in meetings a lot, often late into the night. Um, so one of the things that I hope you know um, is that your students will have plenty to do, um, which is wonderful, but might also mean that they won't always reply right away when you text them or call them because they have really full schedules like this from the moment they wake up uh, to the moment they go to bed. Um, and everybody here mentioned things like, maybe I'll grab dinner with friends or maybe I will study with friends. So could each of you maybe tell me or tell us about your best friend at Williams? Like how you met them, um, something about them? Um, so my best friend is Mary Ann, that's her name. Um, she's from Boston and we actually met because she was in my group for a pre-orientation for first generation college students. We were in the same group. Um, and I specifically gravitated towards her because she was the only other person on the tour guide group to bring her family. I was like, okay, so like if my mom embarrasses me, it's not that big because her mom is here too. 
Um, and I remember she would like she would like try to show that she wasn't listening in on the jokes my mom made because when I came to campus, there was a subway on Spring Street, and there was always this fun fact about how. You know, how didn't Williams know that Subway was a food chain? My mom was like, oh, Williams is this cool school. Like, they didn't know Subway was a food chain. Whole thing. Um, me and Marianne became best friends, like, literally overnight. We spent all this time together. Um, me and her are actually complete opposites. So I'm an American Studies major. She is a biology, psychology double major while also doing pre-med, which involves work like physics and all types of things. She is by far the most studious person I've ever met. Like, I do homework when the whim comes to me. Marianne is someone who, like, really just has her stuff together. Like, sh I can call her right now, and she's probably either with, like, her little baby cousin, or she's getting ready for Williams, because she'll be back pretty soon. And we miss her. She was an orientation leader last year. Um, but yeah, I think she's the complete opposite from me in a lot of ways. We have different fashion tastes. We... She's, she loves calling herself bougie, things like that. Um, but yeah, she's a really special person to me and I'm glad, like I really don't know how we could have met if it wasn't for Williams. Um, yeah. Um, so my, probably my closest friend here, um, Angel, another fellow, JA, um, we met during SSP, which is like this summer science program that um, a small group of pre are um, a part of. And um, so that's how we met initially. We got closer through um, a lot of common interests, um, mainly soccer. Um, we both are chemistry majors, we're both pre-med. Um, so we had a lot of classes together, spent a lot of time together. We both live in the same building, freshman and sophomore year. Um, and now we're in adjacent entries. So um, it's, it's really amazing how close we've gotten over the past two years. Um, and even though we have a lot of common interests, we're completely different people. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, just for starters, we come from different backgrounds. I'm from New Jersey, but he's from Texas and has told me lots about Texas. <laughs> and <laughs> honestly, I've never been, but I'd, I'd like to give it a shot one day. Um, I've told him about my experiences growing up in New Jersey and um, going to a boarding school, which is something he had never really known much about. Um, and we always have lots to tell to each other. So. Um, one of my best friends at Williams, unfortunately, will not be here this year. She's studying abroad, um, but her name is Brett. Um, we met during first-gen orientation. We were in the same OL group, um, but I guess the first time we actually saw one another was when we were moving into the dorms. We were actually in the same entry as well as being in the same orientation group. Um, the way we kind of started to be friends is really awkward and really, really funny. Um, we both were interested in the same job through the Davis Center. So we were talking about like writing our cover letters and our resume, and that's kind of how we started talking. And then the more we got to know each other, the more we reflected and thought that was such a weird introduction to be talking about like applying for jobs together when now we do everything else together. <laughs> um, so that's a lot of fun. I'll definitely miss having her around next year. Um, I don't, I have like two people, so Sonia and Chade, we also met during SSP, um, actually Abe and I were in the same, like we're all in the same year, so like we were all in SSP, and I remember I, I came late to SSP because in New York graduation is so late, so like I was like one of the last people, the second to last person to get there, and I remember Chade, I was like sitting in the chemistry room kind of like this, and I didn't really know what to do, and I was like, can I just see your notes? Because I was late, <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sure, you can you can see them. And that's kind of how our relationship started. And then Sonia kind of started a little later, probably toward the spring semester of my freshman year. Um, she started hanging out with Shade because they were both in gospel choir. And I was like, so Shade, like, who are you spending all your extra time with now? Like, you got a new friend or something? And then <laughs> she was like, yeah, Sonia from SSP. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember Sonia. And then we all like came together as like kind of a trio. And then when Sonia became a housing coordinator last year, which is somebody that is kind of like, um, I guess in charge of the building, kind of like an RA in like other campuses, um, she pulled us in and we all lived in the same building last year and like we really, um, that's when our relationship really started to grow as like a trio and like we would go to concerts together and like do each other's hair, stuff like that. So um, those are like the two people on campus that are my best friends. Thank you all. Um, so you're getting the idea that your students are going to make friends in all different sorts of ways, right? Through their classes, through their dorms, through the activities that they join. They might meet 
you know, their closest friend, like maybe they've met them already, right? Maybe they met them this morning. Um, maybe it'll be in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, there are a lot of wonderful people here from all over. Um, and I know that your students will, will find their people um, in so many different sorts of ways. Um, our students um, on the panel also mentioned, you know, that they're taking part in classes and all these clubs. And I know that today you also heard from a lot of the folks on campus who are supporting your students. Um, and you probably have some questions about, okay, like who's actually going to be like there for my kid? Like, what is that going to look like? So maybe could each of you tell us about a mentor that you have on campus and um, how you're connected with them? Whatever order you want to go in. Well, this person was on campus last year. Um, she was a JA when I was a freshman, so she graduated. She was um, she was a junior last year, but we started getting closer last year. She's also on the track team. Her name is Kenne, and I think Abe was that your JA? Yep. Yeah. So um, she wasn't my JA directly, but um, she was a JA of like my class, and we she was kind of a mentor to me because she was a biology major, um, and being on the track team, I just kind of like just became like really much more closer to her because we spent like a lot of time outside of like academics together. And like that's an another important thing to like understand is that like just because um, you like have classes with people doesn't mean you're gonna become close to them. You can also like foster relationships like outside of things that you would have never expected. And um, Kenny just became like a mentor to me because I don't know, she did a lot of the things that I wanted to do with my like Williams career. She was a bio major, um, neuroscience concentration. Uh, she did a thesis last year, which is really great. And like completing a thesis here is like, like a really big task. And I was like, I really need to be like Kenny when I, when I get to that point. So I feel like um, she was one of the people that I kind of looked up to because I just felt like she kind of came into Williams and like really um, used a lot of his resources and really got the best out of the college. And I wanted to do the same. So, um, one of maybe the most significant mentors I've had at Williams, um, you've actually all met, uh, she's sitting over there, um, but it's Dean Ruiz, um, especially in my first year, and uh, in, in a lot of different ways throughout all the time I've been at Williams, I've faced a lot of different, especially sort of academic challenges. Um, I think there's a way that, um, yeah, I, I also went to a boarding school, an international boarding school. So there's a way that I kind of disillusionedly, <laughs> I felt really prepared with the idea of starting school at Williams, um, but in practice, the way that, as we mentioned, all the different extracurriculars and meetings and sort of relationship network kind of building plays into that. Um, I find myself getting really often kind of overwhelmed by everything um, and need a lot more guidance. Um, so I think th one of the best things I've been learning from Dean Ruiz is trying to identify some of those ways that um, I, those moments where I might need help and then finding ways to very proactively uh, ask for the help that I need, right? I think I got very used to doing things on my own um, that maybe one of the hardest challenges I've been facing at Williams is how to identify an issue and then find ways to find support so that I can make it through that conflict. Um, and she's been essential in sort of helping me make that growth. Um, so Mazzy and I share the same uh, mentor, Kenne. So uh, she was my JA. And if I could describe her in one word as a JA, just wow. Um, <laughs> she was always there for everyone. And um, when I first met her, um, this was like very first day of like Williams pretty much when I thought I was gonna be a bio major neuroscience concentrated and I was like wow Kenny is me but older um, That didn't happen. I'm a chem major instead, um, but I'm still pre-med which is good um, And just having her living with her throughout the entry my freshman year um, She was always willing to give advice and always tell you the truth of no matter what um, Even if it wasn't something you want didn't want to hear um and then going into sophomore year, I wasn't really sure if like I could still be friends with my JAs, if they were like too cool to hang out with the sophomore since they were seniors now. But that just wasn't the case with her or my other JA. Um, but I also had a class with Kenne, and although we both struggled, we struggled together, and that was um, that was a really better time than it couldn't have been. So I'm really grateful for her. So I'm technically going to cheat on the question because I feel like I have to mention two different people, but I'll make it short so it's like one. Um, so I think the first person is someone who you've probably seen like glued to the hip um, this weekend. If you've seen me, you've probably seen Yasneri. 
She's wearing the same shirt as I am, but she's taller and much more calmer than I am. You've definitely seen me frantically like asking you during like breakfast or lunch, like, are you okay? You sure you don't need anything? She's like calm, like work, walks with purpose. Um, and she was my orientation leader. So we're co-directors now for pre-orientation, but she was actually my orientation leader when I was a freshman. Um, and she was really instrumental into me really feeling like getting the groove of William. So it was December and like, you know, we were meeting for dinner one time and she was like, so what are you doing for the summer? And I was like, and then, you know, I, after that I was like, I can't be embarrassed like that again. I got to step up my game. The next time I saw her, I was like, well, I'm applying to so and so and so. And I still do that now. Like now she's a senior and she's into econ, which is stuff I don't understand. So she's like, yeah, like firms and stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool. Um, and I want to be a teacher and stuff like that. And so I'm like, oh, you know, like what teaching program should I do? But like she always makes an effort to like really look up. And so like while we've been preparing for this weekend all day um, this past week, every night Yaz and I are talking about like her future because it's a year from now. She's going to be like a full time adult, which is scary. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to be here. This, this, my senior year will be the first year I've been here without her, and I don't know what a Williams without her is like. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful for her. And so if you see her, like, you know, she is a really great mentor. And a quick one I want to mention is the head of American Studies, Cassandra Cleghorn. She's this, like, gentle, like, soft-spoken woman who just, like, like, her office feels like what Hogwarts feels like in my opinion like just like kind of like filled with books like that you'd want to read and like she has this dog that's as big as me and she I took her introduction to American studies my spring semester of my freshman year and it was the first time I'd ever gone to an like she was like oh you know like she wrote comments on my essay it was the first time I had the guts to go to an office hours and be like oh, well, I, let's talk about my essay. Like, you know, like, let's talk about it. And she, like, opened the door, and she had tea. She was like, do you want something? I was like, no, I don't drink tea. And then, like, her dog, she, like, let the, do the dog basically pet me as a, and reassured me <laughs> while she, like, read my essay. And she was like, yeah. And, like, she, I think she was someone who was always a constant. Like, the minute I took her class, like, the minute I saw the syllabus, I was an American Studies major, and I never once hesitated. I am a Libra, so that means, like, I'm always back and forth. Um, but American Studies was something I never doubted because I knew she'd always be there at the head of it, supporting me. And she's actually, so not to be the junior, especially in front of JAs, that's like, oh, I'm studying abroad. Um, but so like the, re the, <laughs> um, the uh, spring semester program that I'm doing is actually in Arizona and it's about focusing on the border between Mexico and the US as well as looking at the border um, in Guatemala as well. And it was a program that's like I'm super excited for and I wouldn't have found without her because I was talking, I was like, I want to do stuff, but I don't know what I want to do. Like, I'm not finding anything. She went out of her way, contacted the entire study abroad office, was like, I have this student and you need to find something for her. They emailed me. They were like, what about this? She met with me. She was like, bah, 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 bah. And then I applied. I got in and like now I'm doing it. And I, it's something I wouldn't have even known existed if it wasn't for her going the extra mile and doing something without even me having to ask for it. Um, so yeah, really lucky. Wonderful. So hopefully what you took away from all of these fantastic stories is that this is a community where everybody looks out for each other, right? The students who are one or two years ahead look out for the new students and give them advice and guide them about how to navigate this place. The professors are looking out for their students and making sure they're connected to the opportunities and programs that really fit their interests um, to move them along. People like deans, thank you Alejandro, um, and other staff are really there to, to help our students so your students are going to find so many people on this campus who are cheering them on and who are there to support them and to answer their questions and to help them through when things maybe seem a little bit rough um, so I hope you feel comfortable and confident in that um, so now that you have a little bit of a sense of the student experience, we want to open it up to questions from you. What sorts of things are you wondering about student life that our actual real life students can answer for you? Yes, hi. Um, I'm a mess right now, so forgive me, because I'm like happy and sad, excited and scared, mm -hmm. laughing and crying is all at the same time, right? So I just want to know, how often do you guys have opportunity to go home? So I want to repeat the question for anybody who hasn't heard it. So the question was, you know, 
like we're, we're happy for our students, we're sled that they're going to be away at college. When are we going to see our students again? How, how often do our students get to go home? And maybe speak from your experience and maybe other things that you know about your friends. So on the laughing and crying part, just one quick little thing. I was in orientation last year and as was Alejandro and Mazzy. And as they know, I was in the family presentation. So we talked about how do you deal with like contacting your family while balancing Williams. And I start, I literally got a sentence in into talking about my mom. And I started crying in front of the entire freshman class because she had just left. And I was like, yeah, you know, like talking to your mom is really important. And I just started crying because I was, so trust me, like if you're feeling that, your student is also feeling that way um, for any parents out there. Um, I'm from New York. And so my spring semester, I was so homesick that I worked so I worked five to six uh, jobs on campus my freshman year. I technically still do now, but it's it's not as bad as it seems. Um, and so I had like a lot of extra money and like Williams, you know, with the book grant and things like that. So I basically spent all of my work study savings buying a Peter Pan ticket back home and I would go just for the weekend. Um, I didn't have class on Fridays. I have a personal belief that class shouldn't be on Fridays. To this day, I have not had a class on Friday. so. Fingers crossed. Um, so I would go home Thursday nights and come back Sunday nights. And like, I was basically ending up in a circle where like I wasn't spending the funnest time of campus, which is on the weekend when you don't have class. And then I was wondering why I wasn't liking campus as much and why I wasn't making friends. And it's because I was at home. So I was ending up in a circle. So I am fortunate enough that I live on the East Coast. And so going home is easy for me. It's just a matter of like, when is it healthy? So it's possible to go home a lot. It's just about like making sure you're doing it for the right reasons um, and things like that. And so now as a, or what I did as a sophomore was for major events, things like that. Um, but definitely being very conscious of like, why is it that I'm going home? Am I running towards something or am I running away from something? I think is definitely something to make sure you talk to your students or talk to your children about <laughs> our students, your children. Um, so I kind of mentioned earlier that I went to a boarding school. So the transition from high school to college um, in terms of living away wasn't something that was as jarring for my parents as it is for um, probably most um, others. But when I did start high school, um, I found myself going home almost as often as I could just because it was like an hour, an hour, 15 minute drive away. So every long weekend I had, um, I would just call my parents and say, you want to pick me up? And they, they were always happy to do that. Um, but I found that, um, like Michelle said, I wasn't really having as much fun on campus as a lot of the other people were because a lot of people stayed um, over the weekend, which is the only time you could relax because we had classes every other day. Um, so it just those like frequent breaks became farther and further apart from each other. Um, and I started to enjoy my time at school more just because I got to see school um, in a context without classes, like every weekend. Um, and then when I finally did get to go home on like, on uh, extended breaks like Thanksgiving and winter and spring break, um, I got to appreciate the time I had at home more often. So in a way, um, getting over that initial barrier of staying away from home um, for a while is hard to get over. Um, I do think I'm in a better place now where um, I'm having more fun both at school and at home because I am able to stay away from home longer. Yeah. So I live a little bit farther. Um, my family, so my parents and my sisters live in, in Colorado, um, and that's maybe about like a seven or eight hour trip altogether with driving to the airport and the flights and everything. Um, and also kind of expensive. Um, so I don't actually get to make it home very often. Um, the thing that made it even harder when I thought more and more about going home, I also went to a boarding school, but my boarding school was about a two hour drive from my hometown. Um, so that made it a lot easier, even though I think me and my family had, for me coming to college, that sense of like, I'll be away for school and I'll come back for winter break, for summer break. Taking it to the East Coast meant I probably would only be coming back once a year. And then I had to choose, since it was only one trip a year, whether I'd be visiting my parents in Colorado or my grandparents in Mexico. Um, and that became really kind of, kind of the status point of thinking about going home. It made me almost not want to leave so I wouldn't have to make that decision. Um, so I just kind of, I, I told that to my parents and we, and we kind of made this deal that any time I would go home, it'd be over winter break because over the summers I'm usually working a job or internship um, and we'd meet 
in Mexico and we'd have Christmas and New Year's with my grandparents and my whole family in Mexico. Um, so that's something that is now really, really exciting and I really look forward to. Even though it's only once a year, it feels like the best time of year to be going. Um, I guess I'm also fortunate enough because I'm from New York. However, I didn't have the same, I guess, like, um, thing as Michelle where I felt kind of dis like, I felt like, wow, like, I need to go home. Um, I was kind of like, I don't know if maybe it's just me, but I was kind of like, okay, well, bye, mom. Like, <laughs> I don't know how my mom really felt about that. I, I, uh, <laughs> um, I guess my mom and I, we have an interesting relationship. You know, she just kind of, my mom kind of like dropped me off. Like every year she drops me off and picks me up. But she drops me off, takes my stuff up and says, all right, see you later, Mazzy. So I think we're kind of doing the same thing. But um, I think I appreciated I think I appreciated home more after like being at Williams for so long. So I would go home on the regular schedule break. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, I was fortunate enough to spend my last winter study in New York de doing Teach NYC, which I did with Michelle. So I got to actually be home for like a month in January instead of like staying on campus. However, freshmen have to stay on campus. So um, for winter study and then after that they can do whatever. But um, so I think going home the first time I like left, so Thanksgiving, I really appreciated it. I was like, wow, like I love New York, <laughs> I love being home. I love like my mom's cooking. I think that's what made me even appreciate it more. So I think it's you. You should look forward to that first time coming home because I feel like they'll just come home and see you and give you like a big hug. Because it's like wow, like I like I'm happy to go to school, but like going to school made me realize how much I appreciated you guys for like everything you do and like just cooking and just being in the house and just even if you're not talking in the house like just knowing I could go out and say mom what are you doing like on the couch and her just looking at me like that that's something that I didn't appreciate until after like I came home that first break and every single time I was like yeah I really appreciate just having like a home to come back to and like seeing my mom when I went back home so okay thank you what other questions do we have for our students I think three of you mentioned that you did summer programs. Um, did, how well did you think that prepared you for what classes were going to be like at Williams and, and what the, I know you have a lot more of a, of a social life and you know, a lot more going on with campus culture during the year, but how well do you feel like that prepared you for the rigor of your academics? So I'll repeat the question just so for the recording. Um, so the question was, if you, some students have participated in some summer programs before coming to Williams, not everyone has, but for those who participated in those summer programs, um, how the students feel that they may have prepared them, and maybe folks can speak to how you felt prepared or not prepared if you didn't do a summer program and maybe just through pre-orientation or something else. Um, yeah, so I did summer science program, so SSP. Um, I think SSP has like pros and cons to it, and I'm, I'll start with like the pros. I think that um, being around like a group of students helped me, like that would be also at Williams, helped me like kind of like make really good friendships, and strong, strong friendships. So on that end, I think it was okay. The workload in SSP is very heavy though. So we're taking basically four classes in five weeks. So like you get there and I was already late. So you can imagine all the work I had to do to catch up. So I was a little stressed out and it kind of hit me like, whoa, I just graduated high school, I should be celebrating, but I'm at this summer program. Um, but I kind of got over that feeling like I chose to be here and I, I really wanted to be here because I felt like I needed a little extra like preparation for like what Williams was going to be like and I think that it, do, it did a really good job for me especially being pre-med because two of the classes were biology and chemistry and then I ended up having those professors in the fall those same professors that taught biology and chemistry as my actual professors so I kind of got to foster a relationship with both of them and I um, my chem professor David Richardson like I love him so much. He's like extremely great and I really appreciated being able to know him in the summer and like seeing him in the fall because I felt more comfortable like talking to him in office hours per se if I had a problem. I think that it also lets you know that the work at Williams is very rigorous and like professors will help you if you ask them and that is kind of what it taught me in SSP. I didn't ask for help when I should have asked for help but definitely in the semester I was like what happened in SSP I don't want it to happen again. I want to feel confident in my classes, so I'm going to go to office hours. So it kind of like taught me that lesson of just like knowing when I should go in for help and um, knowing that the work at Williams is extremely rigorous, especially if like you're taking a, a, like intro classes like Chem and Bio where there could be a little more people in it than like a normal like class that you would take here. So. I did the Summer Humanities and Social Sciences program. So they happen at the same time as the Summer Science. We just live in different residences and we take different classes. Um, 
I think also I agree with a lot of what Mazzy said. I think that it prepared me a lot socially. Um, a lot of my closest friends on campus came from that program. Um, uh, I think what helped with that is that a lot of us also ended up in the same entry. Um, so it sort of kind of followed me through to the first year. Um, academically, I don't know that it actually prepared me as much. Um, I think in terms of preparation for the school year, first-gen orientation really gave me a lot of tools for like academic mindset, a sort of like these are the questions you should be asking yourself as you choose classes, as you go through your homework, as you sort of study for exams. Um, that um, I think I might have been exposed to. I think the summer humanities program gave me a lot of sort of I tried these things and they really didn't work. And then first in orientation gave me a lot of, a, oh, maybe that's why it wasn't really working so well, kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, um, I think the, the sort of idea of preparation, the summer humanities felt a lot less preparatory than it did sort of experimental, sort of like, let's see what happens in a month. Because um, it feels so different from the way the school year actually felt, yeah. Um, so I did the summer science program, and I think it definitely prepared me socially. Um, coming in here, I had a group of 20-something people that I al already knew, um, and I think four of them ended up in the same entry as I did, so that was a great way to start off the school year. Um, in terms of academic preparation, um, I felt like it wasn't the, wasn't the most accurate representation of what it's really like to be a student here. Just because during the summer science program, you have you do have your four course, um, your course load, um, you do have work, uh, assessments and all that, but you don't have any of the extra extracurriculars, no clubs, no sports going on. Um, there are a lot fewer people on campus, so a lot fewer um, like major like school wide events. So those are things that um, when I first started like actual Williams in the fall, um, I didn't really think about and I took it took some time for me to incorporate all that into um, also completing all my schoolwork. Um, so I actually didn't do any summer program before coming to Williams. Um, the first time I really came besides previews was for pre-orientation. Um, I don't think I necessarily felt any worry. I was worried about, you know, the academic standards or the rigor of Williams or anything like that. Like ultimately uh, what I knew was that um, I had done something right to get to Williams and that I was all going to do whatever was necessary to make sure that I got through Williams. Um, and so for me, it was just, you know, a learning curve. And I think I avoided a lot of pitfalls of freshman year and um, just by going to pre-orientation. And so like, like I said, like having my orientation leader be someone who was on top of me with stuff like internships and like, you know, like if you're worried about this, then you need to talk to the professor and things like that. Um, that ultimately, I think my freshman year, I wasn't necessarily looking for a specific grade or anything. I know at the uh, Christmas time, my mom was like, so you got all A's, right? And I was like, you don't know how college works. Um, well, that's it's a little unrealistic. Um, but I think for me, I wasn't for anyone whose students didn't do summer programs. I don't think it leaves you any worse off or anything. Um, I'm con I made the choice not to go to summer um, a summer program because I wanted those last few months at home. Um, and I don't regret my choice at all. And I still feel happy at where I am, um, both academic, where I am and where I started at academically and socially at Williams. Um, so definitely, I think there's pros to both. Um, yeah. And your student will be successful no matter what. Um, I, I like this thread that I was hearing, and I think you kind of um, really communicated it well about grades because I know that um, all of our students are are accustomed to receiving A's in like most everything. Um, if you came from a high school that used numbers like 90s and 100s on everything, or 4.0s, whatever the system was, um, and Michelle is saying like. Well, college like works differently. It's true. Um, our students work extremely hard. Um, our professors work extremely hard on behalf of the students. And the idea about being at Williams is to bring your academics to the next level, right? They're going to be developing their skills in ways that are really different than the ways they develop their skills um, in high school. Um, so I talk to a lot of students, especially in their first year, when they get their first grades that are not an A. 
or that are not a 100. Um, and oftentimes they think, well, this means that I'm not doing well. This means I'm not working hard enough. This means that I've failed at something. And I always tell them, no, that's not what this means. Like if you already knew everything, you wouldn't have to be at college. If you were already perfect at everything, you wouldn't have to be at Williams. This is the time where you're trying new things. This is the time when you're, um, you're really developing in how you write. Maybe in high school you wrote papers that were three or four pages long, and now you have to write 20 pages. Like you're not gonna be perfect at that the first time that you do that. That takes practice and that takes advice and guidance. Um, so I hope that when your students start getting their first grades um, this semester, this year, next year, that you don't ask them how many A's did you get? or you don't get disappointed when they don't get an A um, because your students are working hard. And they're going to be, I, I guarantee you that they are going to feel upset when they don't get A's. Um, you don't have to be extra upset <laughs> on top of that. Just know that they're working hard and let them know that you support them. So we have, I think we had another question in this area. Yeah. Did you say that every freshman does winter study? On campus? Yeah, so all the first year students um, for winter study do winter study on campus. And then, in, and then, yep, and that's in January. And then in the years to follow, there are other opportunities for winter study that might take them to places like New York City or places like Europe, right? Um, there, there are lots of different opportunities for winter study, which takes place in January. Hi. So um, if you would recall your first two years, which is very recent, what advice would you give like okay now that i know this i'm a junior um i wish i knew this then like when i was a freshman year or sophomore year so the question was um what advice would our students give to their kind of like freshman year selves which in many ways is just what you all do as working for orientation or working as jas like they are in the business of giving advice to to mm -hmm. freshmen right so what are your biggest pieces of advice? Um, I guess I can start. Um, so it's kind of along the lines of what Dean Reeves already said about grades. Um, um, so coming here, you, your students will struggle, and everyone else is also struggling. Um, that took me a while to get. Uh, freshman fall was my worst semester in terms of grades, and it's only gone uphill from there. Um, and that's because I took the time to sort of look at where I went wrong, where usually time management is a big thing, just because even though you have a lot of free time, it's not free time. Um, so that's definitely a big thing. And um, in terms of not getting A's on everything, um, I recently just found out that apparently the freshman fall GPA average is a 2.8, which is about a B minus. So I mean, if, if you're not getting A's, you're just like everyone else. Um. I guess something I wish I'd known that in some way I kind of, th there was no way for me to know it. I wish I'd known what I wanted to do earlier, right? Um, I think something I did know was that the way to find that is by just trying a bunch of things and just seeing how it goes. Um, more than anything, I think um, I always knew what I wanted to do, but I never felt okay with the idea of what I wanted to do, right? So I mentioned I study art history and art. Um, but I think, especially in my first couple of years, I felt that everything I was doing, and I still feel this way, um, that everything I was doing, I was doing because of and thanks to my family and also for my family, right? So there's a way that it felt almost unfair that I'd be going to college, right? One of the first in my family to go to college and then be going to study art. And there's a way that right, I was very uncomfortable and not okay with that idea. Um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, um, I will be doing best in the things that I can do best in and I am most interested in. Um, and it led to a lot of conversations on the phone with my mother of like, okay, well, what if I did do economics? Or what if I did become a lawyer? Or like, yeah, why not just become a doctor? Like, just for fun. Um, turns out it's really hard to become any of those things. <laughs> and it's really, it's really hard to become anything, right? When I think about being an art historian and, and studying art, uh, it's really, really hard to understand how and why people create the things they do. But I think I learned a lot of valuable lessons about people and communication and cultures and connection um, that 
right? I, I think that I, I'm learning that I really, really value, and there's a lot of ways I'm learning more and more that I can apply those that will be just as beneficial to myself and my family, um, if not more so than me sort of sacrificing a lot of my, my joy and happiness that I wouldn't be able to share with my family if I weren't doing the things that made me happy in the first place. Um, I think that for me, I, I think it's important to stress that um, things are going to get rough like in college and whether it be academically, socially, um, it's easy to like really blame yourself for everything and really say, wow, I'm really doing horribly. Like, like this is just not how I planned college to be. I think maybe a lot of us, I don't know, I planned out a lot of things. I'm like, listen, I'm pre-med. I, I got a lot of things to do. Like I can't be, I can't disappoint myself. I can't disappoint my mom. can't disappoint everyone that, that at home that's rooting for me. And I feel like um, when I got to college and I started struggling a little bit, um, I, I question whether or not I should have came here in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people kind of do that, even if you don't realize that you look back on it and say, wow, I really was like questioning whether or not I belong here. So I think for me, I, I would say that give yourself some slack. Like you got here and like you're doing what you want to do and you're doing what you have to do. And sometimes it's going to get hard. You're going to see people in Scout, which is the library here, until 2 a.m. You're going to see people in Sawyer until 2. You're going to see everyone like cramming in work. It's like it's easy to forget that you're not the only one so I would say give yourself like cut yourself some slack and like just admit that like hey like I'm, I'm doing the best that I can right now like this is enough for me and like I'm not gonna put too much pressure on myself that I can't handle right now because that's when the problem starts to happen like that's when you start to like crack a little bit and you start to like isolate and I feel like my freshman year I was a little isolated because I didn't want to reach out for help and just like tell people that like you know I kind of feel this way and my friends would have definitely told me I'm feeling the same way I think that's really what I needed to hear like it's fine like I'm going through the same thing like the problem set was hard for me too so I think that um just remember that I guess like if they call you just tell them just remind them hey like I'm so happy you're there like you're doing a good job like just remind them they're doing a good job um like Dean Ruiz said like we're all in the business of reflecting on what we did wrong our past two years and then making sure other people don't do that. So I think for me, I'm like, well, when that question comes up, I'm just like, okay, what workshop does this apply to? Like, this is exactly what we've been doing. Um, I think, and I, what I give to the freshmen is usually just more like very like, you know, related to academics. I think if I'm being honest with myself, I would say that I shouldn't have taken myself and everything so seriously. Like, I think something like, I always have really embarrassing stories around this. Like, I remember when I went clothes shopping before college, I specifically remember packing outfits that I would do laundry in. Because I was like, you never know who you meet when you're doing laundry. And I was like, you know, I want to be doing laundry and I have my little laundry basket. And I didn't even bring a laundry basket to college. So the image already was broken. And I was like, you know, I'm going to be cute and go up the stairs and I'm going to drop the lawn and then someone's going to help me. I was going to be this whole like, you know, because mind you, my only experience with college has been movie. So I'm like, you know, like I'm going to meet, you know, Williams, you know. I don't know if I should tell families this, but Williams has a thing about like you marry people from Williams. I was like, you know, that's gonna be me, you know, all this stuff. Um, I specifically remember I had, you know, we all have pajamas that like have cartoon characters and all types of things. I was like, no, very serious patterns only. Like, you know, what if someone knocks on my door and they see me in like Hello Kitty pajamas? Like that'll stay at home for Christmas. Like, and so I think I was really trying to shed very like what I consider to be very childish or very silly parts of myself. And so like when my mom called me nicknames on the phone and she was like, Shelly Belly, I was like, no, like, you know, like I'm serious. Like, like it was the first time I was trying on adulthood. And so I wanted to make sure that I could play the part correctly. And so for me, I felt like a lot of it was like, you know, like I had to act a certain way, you know, I always had to like, you know, like carry myself and everything. And then like, I think sophomore year, I was just like, you know, <laughs> I mean, all of the pajamas that I didn't bring freshman year, I brought sophomore year. I wore Coca-Cola, but I wore Coca-Cola pajama pants. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go all out. And I wore red fuzzy slippers with it. Um, <laughs> really fashionable. And I think like really just like, even if you do notice like a maybe a slight like where you're your child is just like, you know, they're trying to be a little more like, you know, a little like, you know, sit a little higher and stuff like that. Like my mom joked about it and I was like, no, like I'm trying really hard to like be serious and be an adult. Like this is what I should be like. And then like I grew into it and like now I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty silly and stuff <laughs> like um, 
so yeah like don't give your child too much grief because this is the first time they're really trying out what it's like to be an adult and like live on their own and just laugh at it and then one day a few years from now they'll laugh at it with you Thank you. Um, so that actually is a good segue into, I think, our final question, since you want to see your students for um, dinner in a second. Um, if any of the panelists have something you want to share, like something that you wish your families knew um, in the first year, um, something that you wish the people back home knew or had in mind. I know you just mentioned um, about, you know, students like, trying on adulthood in different ways and giving them the space to figure that out. What other advice do you have for families um, for the first year? <laughs> something, uh, something I'm still trying to figure out how to share with my parents, and maybe that's something I wish they knew, right? How, how hard, I'm trying to find a way to make this experience of, um, of finding new opportunities and discovering new lenses and new ways of thinking, how I can make them a part of that. Um, that's really, really, really hard to do, right? To sort of share that learning, but also share that understanding, right? Um, I think um, I still haven't told my mom I'm studying art because I'm trying to find a way <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to make that conversation, right, the best conversation it can be. Like, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm going to study art. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck. But, um, right, that idea of... There we go. There we go. Um, the, yeah, sort of the essence behind that point is sort of um, trying to show my family sort of how many things are available to me one, because I studied art, but, but two, because I'm, I'm at Williams, right? Two, because I have this large community around me um, that is just as invested as my family is in making sure that I am happy, that I am safe, and that I do well, right? I feel it every day by living here, and my family doesn't, right? They don't. I wish I had more ways to tell them how all this support and love and care that I feel on campus. What we're concerned about, of course, we want your well-being and all that stuff. After school, we want our kids to be able to be a producer and take care of their bills and provide for their stuff with shelter, food, clothing, and not move back in to the house. <laughs> but you know, I mean, we love you guys. But yeah, we just want to make sure that you guys can take care of yourselves when we're not around or when we're not available for whatever reason. So that, that's, that's our fear, mm -hmm. making yep. sure that you can take care of yourself uh, as much as we would take care of you. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't think I could ever take care of myself as much as my mother. Oh, we try. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Aww. But you know what I mean. And yeah. We're always there. We, we drop everything. How many? Okay, sure. Yeah. What? Okay. You go to school in New Hampshire? Sure, I'll drive six hours. No worries, honey. <laughs> That's why I don't want to let her go, see? Yeah. <laughs> Too much love. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, I'll drop everything, I'll drive over. You only have one hour for me, because you have group meetings and exams. It's a problem, honey. Yeah. I'll be here for an hour for you. I'll drive back home. So it's like that, but we want to make sure that when you leave Williams, you're, you're a producer and you can take care of yourself. That's fine. Yeah. And my daughter's majoring in arts. <laughs> so I understand you 100%. Careers, 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 and as students come to campus and they don't even know it exists. And then yeah. by starting to study and meeting with the career center, they realize, oh, that there was all these jobs I didn't even know exist. And I can major in art and have a career where I can. Yeah, I think it's the economics so. of it that we're concerned about. Like, you guys have like, a pretty good track record yeah. on that. Though. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. maybe the last, like, Couple of pieces of advice, maybe folks, we can let folks go to dinner. Does anybody know the final word? Okay, um, I think two pieces of advice I would have is one, I think I always, if I could, I wish my family would know just how much I really am thinking of them. Um, even when they're not consciously on my mind, just things like, I don't know, sometimes I see a sunset that's really pretty and I'm like, you know who would love that? My mom. Like she loves that shade of pink. And 
I don't know. I think like, see, this is what happened at fresh at my pre orientation. <laughs> um, so I'm glad you got to see this too. But um, and see, like she doesn't even know I'm talking about her right now because after this, like my priority is like get, making sure your frosh have the time of their lives. Like I don't think. I don't know, I could check my phone. My mom probably has texted me. I wouldn't know because I'm doing stuff. And like, you know, and I think I always felt guilty anytime I had to decline a call or like didn't text until the next day. Like there is always just like, I, you know, I want her to know I'm thinking of her. Um, but like I have, like I couldn't pick up the phone right now and text her. And so like, I know she texted me last, I told, texted her when I got in after all the freshmen got here. She was like, aren't you should be tired right about now. And I haven't replied to that because I'm so tired and running around. <laughs> um, so I would think like, you know, even if they're not there to like really like say things like they're going to be thinking of you and the little things. Like sometimes I eat rice and I'm like, you know what would hit right now? My mom's rice. Like there's just little things where like I look at an outfit and I'm like, I know exactly what my mom would say. She'd be like, are you really wearing that outside? Like just little things that like remind me of them that like, you know, like it's too small to tell my mom. Like I think she doesn't really understand how much I talk about her at school. Like I really don't think she gets it. Um, and also in that same vein, when your kids come home for the first time, really be understanding. I know like as much as I loved my mom, like I was coming from a new environment where like, not saying your students will do this, but if I wanted to walk around campus at four in the morning, that is my doing and mine alone. Like I really like go and come as I please. I eat what I want, when I want, if I want ice cream for dinner, like that's on me. And so coming home for Christmas and things like that, and it's like, all right, you know, do those dishes, do this, do that. And I'm like, huh, I didn't really have to do that back at Williams and I miss my family, but. <laughs> You know, and then like I'm about to head out the door and I'm getting ready and she's like, oh, where are you going? I was like, I forgot. I have to tell people where I'm going. Um, and so things like that. And I think like, you know, sometimes arguments will start about like there's learning that happens at Williams that I want to share with my family. Um, and it's gone into arguments about like, oh, you know, like and, you know, lines my family has said was like, you know, like just because you go to college, like you think you're better, you think you're different, like you're acting different ever since you've gone to college, like where I felt like they felt like I was a know-it-all and things like that. And I, so I think really think like your students really are going through such a different experience and like they're learning every single second. And like they're, and when they do come home and share it with you, like it's because they want to share it with you. It's not to like, like I love my, I'm a first gen, which means my mother didn't graduate college, but my mother is the most intelligent person in the world. Like she can handle things that like, like the idea of me supporting myself, I'm like, okay, so I know I have bills, but like I also like, apparently light has to be paid. Like how do you calculate that? Like, and that stuff my mom just handles like, so like I feel like just, I want her to know how much I think of her and that even though I'm in college, that I still think she's such an intelligent and like beautiful person and that, um, I don't know, being first gen doesn't negate anything that my mother has ever done and that I'm still extremely proud of like the family that I come from. I think that's a beautiful note to end on. So thank you for being here with us. Thanks our students.